What is going on, your Jeff fans? Second to last 53 man roster video for the Jets. I'm going to do the final predictions with Dylan Terman live next week. In this one, it's just straight up what I would do. I'm not trying to get in Joe Douglas's head. It's what I would do if I had roster control of the New York Jets. Makes it a little bit more fun that way, I think. Um, so to start, yeah, I, I'm going to be in charge here, but I, I am not God. So I cannot heal Jordan Travis, who Zach Rosenblatt says is a, a long way away from even doing. 11 on 11 drills, and I cannot persuade Hassan Reddick to show up. And it's looking more and more likely here as the calendar marches on and on that he will miss at least one regular season game. Uh, so I don't think either one of those guys will count against the 53 initially. Hope to be wrong on Reddick, but we'll see. Quarterback Rodgers and Taylor for me, I don't think either one of the camp arms in Peasley and Martinez are worth rostering. You'd have to give up another guy that you like on the 53. I think you could stick one of them on the practice squad and whichever one you like best. And then if you deal with multiple injuries, you can call them up from there. Um, hopefully you never see any of them play. Even if we do face multiple injuries at quarterback, like you're probably calling up some guys like Colt McCoy or somebody out of retirement or trying to make a trade. I don't think there's a world in which the Jets are in the playoff hunt and Andrew Peasley is starting multiple games for this team. So uh would not roster a third quarterback unless it's Jordan Travis, who's back and healthy. Offensive tackle room. Five has been pretty squared away uh, for me. Smith and, and Moses are your starters. Fashion is the lock is your first round pick. I would keep both Carter Warren and Max Mitchell. I think that you have to look uh, not only obviously depth for this year. I mean, hey, Carter Warren and Max Mitchell are probably better than most teams, fourth and fifth offensive tackles. And the depth is as good as you could ask for um, to have, you know, multiple mid round picks who have been simmering for two and three years as your fourth and fifth options, multiple injuries away from seeing both of them, but also Smith and Moses, maybe they're here next year, but at least one of them is probably gone and fashion is your starter. And maybe Warren and Mitchell are competing to st start opposite of fashion new and worst case scenario, maybe they're, I don't know, maybe they're eat, eat your backups. If, if Carter Warren is a good backup left tackle and Max Mitchell is a good backup right tackle, um, do you love that as fourth round picks? No, but you can live with it. Um, you know, good backup tackles cost five, six million, and these guys are on rookie contracts. So I would definitely keep both of them in the fold. Into your offensive line, your starters, Simpson and ABT are starting on the left and right side of Joe Tipman. Wes Schweitzer definitely got to keep him. He is the most experienced backup interior player. Xavier Newman, uh, I think this is a spot where I would definitely peek at the cutdown market and see if a, a veteran shakes free. Somebody with maybe a little more experience, somebody um, who's has a resume of snapping the ball a bunch of times uh, accurately. But hey man, Xavier Newman, they like him. He's played pretty good in the couple of preseason games. He's played left guard, right guard, and center. So I would give the 10th offensive line spot to Xavier Newman wide receiver. I'm going to keep six here. I think all one through five, I think are locks between Garrett, Mike Williams, Corley Lazard and Gibson. Uh, they'd be locks for me too. Only spot here is that's really, I had to debate is do I keep six or seven? I went with six because there's another spot uh, that I, there's two other guys that I really want to keep that. I don't think will actually make the team. If I was doing a prediction version, but in this one, I would keep Brandon Smith wide receiver. Now, if they, if you want to say Irv Charles because of special teams, that's totally fine. If you think Brownlee is better, if you want to keep Brownlee and Irv Charles, there's a lot of ways you can slice this. I'm not dying on the hill for Brandon Smith, but I kind of am because, because I don't know, man, the kid's got some exciting traits to me. Um, he, he's got four for four and contested catch opportunities in the preseason, small sample size, but still impressive. He gives you some like boundary ball winning ability that I think could fit well with Aaron Rodgers if he had to play. And I think we need to be honest about this wide receiver room, which is improved. I like Malachi Corley. I liked Denzel Mims. We don't, we don't know what he is. Right. Um, and we massively overrated this room last year. At least I did. I thought it was a, that was an okay room, especially before Corey Davis retired, but the wide receiver room last year, quarterback play. Okay. We understand that offensive coordinator, offensive line, all that built into it. The wide receiver room that we rolled out last year outside of Garrett Wilson was hot trash. Just reality. And the only player that we've added that uh, is a proven player in this league is Mike Williams, who is currently still only riding a bicycle in practice. So that's just a reality check. That's not negative. It's just it is what it is. Um, so I would like to roster another like guy with some wide receiver skills and traits over a special teamer if we could afford it in this room. Some other rooms, maybe that I like the depth a little better. We can go with a, a more special teams oriented player. But I'd like to keep a receiver here. Also a spot where I'm looking at the cutdown market to see if I could add 
a veteran. But for right now, I like Brandon Smith. I would keep him as the sixth wide receiver. And, and can we coach him up to play some special teams? Maybe. Running back, Hall, Allen, Davis, Izzy, nothing against him. I don't think his stock has gone down in the preseason at all. I just, there's other guys I want to keep over a fourth running back. And I think, you know, Malachi Corley, if you really needed him to in a pinch, you could ha- you could give him four or five carries in a game if, if things got to that uh, level. But all these three are locks to make the team. Tight end slash fullback. I, I, I could see the Jets keeping four here. I'm going to keep three in Conklin, Rucker, and Yeboah. You know, between Yeboah and Ferkser, flip a coin. I'll go with our guy, Kenny, though. I'm not going to fight you too hard if you want to go with Ferkser um, or keep a fourth. But again, there's a couple of guys we'll get to on the defense and, and one special teamer that I really want to keep. So tight end is one of those spots where I had to go a little bit light. Speaking of Leonard Taylor right here. So five interior defensive linemen. I, I know I think the Jets probably won't do this, but I will. Um, obviously, Quinn Williams and Kinlar are your starters. Foto and Thomas almost assuredly will make the team. I would roster Leonard Taylor because I think he is a player that, and maybe you can get him back to the practice squad. Let's be honest. Every team had the chance to draft him and they all passed on him, including the Jets. And he hasn't lit the world on fire in, in the preseason. But there's been like four like just splash plays, tackles for loss by this kid, where it's like, damn, like that that's how legitimate NFL defensive tackles win their reps. Like it just looks He's, he's getting his wins in ways that it just looks different than Tanzel Smart. It looks different than Bruce Hector. It looks different than Jalen Holmes, right? Um, and I think that he could be potentially, could he be a starter next year next to Quinn Williams? Not a great starter, but could he replace Javon Kinlaw? Could he do what Quentin Jefferson did with Sheldon Rankins? It'd be that that guy next to Q that you're getting single teamed and you take advantage of it and you get your five sacks and your 38 pressures. And can we have Leonard Taylor do that on the minimum salary uh, versus having to pay a guy $6 million? Maybe I think there's other guys on this team where I don't necessarily see a spot for them to be a starter next year. Leonard Taylor, I do. So I would kind of go out of my way to keep LT three if we could. And we can because I'm calling the shots here. Edge. Obviously, no. When Reddick comes back, somebody will have to be uh, go to the practice squad or whatever else. But for right now, Jermaine and McDonald are uh, I would definitely obviously keep them. And then my next guy up, like if we had a game tomorrow. I think Tack McKinley should be starting in base opposite of Jermaine Johnson with Will McDonald being in that Bryce Huff role. Uh, Tack McKinley's been good. Now he's got a, a, he's nicked up right now. He's got a bunch of surgeries, injury history. Understand that, but I'm going to ride with Tack as long as he can go because the dude showed some juice off the edge. He's played the run pretty good in the preseason. Um, so yeah, I would definitely roster him. McGregor has really impressed me. Uh, he's impressed me. A lot more than Watts. I already think he's a better pass rusher than Michael Clemens, to be honest. So especially if if Reddick is not on the roster, McGregor has to be. I, I don't see a world in which you, you keep like um, Jalen Holmes or somebody like that over McGregor, who, again, it's fourth stringers, whatever, but he's he is bringing the smoke off the edge in these games. So I like him a lot. Michael Clemens, I would keep him now. Would I start him? No, but that's fine. Robert Sala knows what he's doing more than me. I get it, but this is just my channel. It's my two cents. Um, and Clemens, I would keep him. I don't, I don't think we have, especially if Reddick is not here, we don't have six edge players better than Clemens, but he'd be like my fourth or fifth guy and not my second guy. Um, and then Eric Watts, I keep him, you know, he hasn't done a ton, but, uh, I guess it's just, if it was, they're going to keep six edge players. It was like Watts or Jalen Holmes, similar skill set. I'll just go with the younger guy with more potential and Eric Watts. Linebacker, I'll keep four, Mosley, William Sherwood. No one's going to argue that. Uh, I'm a Zaire Barnes guy, so that's just that's what this is. I don't have any evidence that Zaire Barnes is worth keeping over Chaz Surratt or Sam McGuavin, although I will mention, uh, as as we know, that Chaz Surratt is injured every five seconds. So if you want to keep him until he's injured, that's fine. But uh, I do think Zaire Barnes has the potential to be a starting linebacker, especially with this team, with like linebacker development of all the flaws of this, this Jets team team and Jets coaching staff, I don't know if there's a better spot to be uh, to come in as a developmental linebacker than under Robert Sala and Jeff Holbrook. And Zaire Barnes has a, has some uber athleticism. I like him. And guys, we got to be honest. We're looking at the future of this team. Can we afford to pay Sauce, Garrett, Breach, Jermaine, ABT, Michael Carter, all these guys? Look, Quincy Williams ain't playing for $6 million in 2026. Okay, so that decision is coming as well. Um, so I'd like to keep him in the fold as a pipeline linebacker as well. And he could play special teams too. So I would keep Zaire Barnes. Only four linebackers because of Leonard Taylor and another guy I'm going to keep that they probably won't have had to guess, who is Brandon Codrington. 
So cornerbacks, uh, JBC has an injury. No, at the time of this recording, I don't know that it's serious enough to where the, it would impact this prediction, but Sauce, DJ Reed, Michael Carter are your starters. Eccles, Diggers, JBC, I would keep all three of them, like all three of them. And then Brandon Codrington. I'm going to keep him as my kick returner. Now you might be saying you're a prisoner of the moment of one preseason game. And to that, I would say you're absolutely correct. <laughs> but dude, you get a guy who can flip the field like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep him over... Chassara, I'm going to keep him over Anthony Ferkser. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep him over Jason. Br I am uh, a guy who like Xavier Gibson had that awesome electric moment week one, but beyond that was a below average kick returner uh, and punt returner with a fumbling problem. So I'd keep Codrington and he could also be your backup nickel in an absolute pinch, but I'm going to go with uh, Godrington as he's been dubbed on Twitter. For the kick returner spot. Don't think they'll do that, but you know, just mixing it up because it's my prediction. So I'm going to throw a couple wrinkles in there. None at safety though. Clark Adams, Davis, and Isaiah Oliver would be the guys. I don't know enough about Jalen Key or Jarius Monroe to say I would cut, you know, like Isaiah Oliver, who they gave a good chunk of money to, and has been a starter in this league. And we know Zerline, Morstead, and Hennessy are going to be kept for special teams. So that's how I would do it. My Jets 53. Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll talk all soon. Go Jets.